organizing with street trackers. Um, we are actually uh, following Corona, have been forced to uh, go online. I propose that everyone puts the sound off so that we have uh, a matter of quality of uh, audio. And that we, uh, if, if you want to raise the, the, the floor, you just put your hands up and we can uh, um, turn on the audio as uh, we are managing the, uh, the technological side of the, of the webinar. So again, welcome to everyone. We are uh, happy again uh, to share expertise and knowledge with our community. And Trade Tracker has been a long time a business partner from uh, B Commerce, and they uh, proposed uh, a very interesting topic, which we can all learn from. So uh, I give the floor to uh, our speakers from Trade Trackers. Okay, here you are. Hello, everybody. Welcome to yes, our webinar. I want to thank you for taking the time today to join us. Just a minute while we launch the presentation. Do you all see our PowerPoint at this point? Yes, it's yes, it's very okay, clear. Great. OK, great. So today, as um, as told, we will talk about uh, tips and tricks to advertise um, on a performance based manner during uh, these times of crisis. Voilà. So the, here is the table of contents which we will cover today. And we will, of course, um, maybe do a little introduction. Uh, there are some people who already know us, but for the people who uh, just joined. So my name is Elisabetta. I am responsible for the sales uh, in Belgium. And I'm here today um, with my colleague Yuki. Yeah, I'm Yuki. Uh, I'm country manager for uh, the Belgian market within uh, Trade Tracker uh, International. Uh, so I'm responsible for uh, Trade Tracker Belgium. Uh, we've been in, uh, here since 2008, so we launched in 2008. Uh, meanwhile, we're uh, based in Ghent. We started in Bruges, but uh, we moved to Ghent. Uh, we're here at uh, the Hilamco Arena. Um, and we uh, are a team of 10. Uh, we have uh, over about uh, 15,000 affiliates that we work with. Um, and we have uh, more than 450 uh, campaigns or uh, clients, uh, as you wish, uh, that we work with. Yes, and it's very great that um, with the international character that Trade Tracker has, having its uh, head office in Almeida, that we can, of course, uh, support all the clients who want to start in Belgium, but also we can advise the Belgian customers who want to go and um, explore the markets in uh, yeah, internationally, so in France, in uh, in other countries all over the world, we can uh, say, OK, we're a strong network. We will bring you in contact because each company and each um, office has, of course, their employees locally. And that's uh, what Trade Tracker stands for. So that was a little introduction of um, the company. Now, of course, with uh, everything that's happening around the world, um, we are today uh, in a crisis. And what we saw is that uh, a lot of advertisers put their um, marketing budgets on hold. Now, we are really wondering because, of course, in 2008, we had the same story. So when um, companies are in a in a crisis, so they panic and that's the first reaction. Unfortunately, uh, the marketing department is always the first department uh, that is looked at when it comes to cost uh, cutting. So today we would um, like to see how your company uh, reacted. So that's why we have launched um, a poll that you can take uh, now via the teams. We will just put it uh, in the chat box. So you can see uh, and the you link is already, already in the chat, chat box. box. Uh, OK, it's already there. OK, great. So if everybody please can just um, take a moment to uh, to take the poll and we will just uh, check live uh, all the responses. 
So now it's activated, so we will see your responses coming in uh, live. And if uh, for some reason it's not working, please uh, just write uh, in, in the chat box of the meeting so we can follow and see if it's uh, if it's clear. Okay, we have somebody who cannot see the uh, link. Okay. Yeah, that's the link. We, yeah, that's the link. So we just uh, copied it and pasted it again. I hope you can now see it and open it. Yes, OK. <laughs> OK, so we are seeing uh, two responses coming in already. Just waiting a bit more to have the other answers from the from the responders, yeah, OK, cut budgets. Yeah, OK, we just see that we have all the responses uh, coming in. I can see here that it's uh, it's divided. What I like that I see is that um, people have responded also that there is an optimization uh, done on the new customer behavior, which is, of course, why we are here and what we will discuss now. Uh, other, I'm not sure uh, what this represents, uh, the other 40%. But I'm, I'm really keen on, on hearing, maybe you can put some comments also in the chat to see what um, other for you means. So we can also anticipate on that. And then we see also 20% um, that really cuts uh, the budget. Now, I think it's, um, it's a mix that we have here. So it's very good that we can discuss. For the optimization on new customer behavior, this is something that we really, okay, I see something coming in. From Rick, less frequent live events to frequent webinars plus social media, media posts. Okay. Okay, that is what the other is. Okay. Yeah, one to Yeah. Okay. So we saw that, of course, there is different uh, things that are coming in. Now, I think it's it's very good that the first uh, reaction is to of course optimize in a new world there should be a new marketing action so you cannot continue the way you were uh, already doing your marketing the cutting of the budgets that's a question that we have now is okay uh, was this decided um, from you the marketeer or the person responsible for uh, the budget or was this coming from um, above but also for all the other questions uh, so who decided actually for the new strategy that was put in place um, during uh, the lockdown and and starting with um, with the new measurements I will just activate the next question so you can also um, participate and it's on the same link it's so on the same, same link, link yeah but it should sh uh, show another poll now So maybe like, uh, it's, it's yes. uh, nice to add that uh, actually this is already a very uh, good uh, mix. mix and and uh, what we saw uh, with our uh, clients yes. was more of the even stopping campaigns and for sure cutting budgets but optimizing on uh, on customer behavior if you respond if that was your response and this already means I think that you don't uh, represent the majority of, oh. of digital marketeers so they this already means that you uh, yeah 
are, are very well informed yes. about uh, what to do with uh, with your budget. But yes, as as Yuki said, uh, unfortunately, we saw the panic reaction and a lot of campaigns being put on hold. Now I can see here as well a mix again. Uh, Yuki, yeah. Uh, yeah, between you decided, the management decided. Uh, I think it's good to to assess. Okay why was uh, the management's decision to to put the marketing budget on hold? Mm -hmm. And uh, if that was the case, how did you as a marketeer Respond react? To that. Yeah. Um, so that's why we are here today to discuss a bit and to make it interactive to see how did you handle it um, and what came. OK, I'm just going to put back the um, yeah, so that's my question today is uh, is more of what you can do to um, the management when they decide okay we will put the budget on hold and we will give you some insights of course talk about uh, performance based marketing because that's where trade tracker comes in that's our, our core business and today if you're having a problem with your management saying okay we need to cut budgets you need to be really the expert as a marketeer and we will guide you today um, how you can uh, defend the decision to not stop everything but come with data come with uh, some um Reporting. Yes, some reporting that you can use some presentations to show that okay this is what we can do without taking too much risk. Yeah, and hopefully in a language uh, that speaks to the minds of, of management and um, because it's often someone uh, that is not in the operational uh, side of it. So it, they only see the costs uh, and they, okay, they also see the returns. But um, uh, yeah, I think as an expert in your field, uh, you should be able to uh, give arguments uh, why you, uh, you would continue with certain channels. Yes. Yes, definitely. And um, yeah, while of course there are a lot of marketing strategies that can be put uh, in place, we will today discuss um, more the performance based uh, marketing. So why why should you use it? Well, of course, since the Corona crisis, we've been in unpredictable times and not to be negative, but we have to, of course, anticipate on it because everything has changed the way we do business. Um, and this should also impact the way we do marketing. Mm. A and lot for of sure the consumer behavior. Changed. Yeah, 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 that is the the top one thing that changed people or um, maybe especially during the lockdown. I mean, mm -hmm. you had so much time. Some people were in unemployed mm -hmm. suddenly and they're just more present online, maybe not looking to buy something, but just cool. scrolling, mm -hmm. visiting your Surfing. website. Mm -hmm. So that's why the channels that you used to use may not be relevant at that point. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah, so the different channels, uh, maybe you were doing some Facebook campaign, some Google campaign, and well, maybe it was a conversion of a customer was uh, visiting your website. This may not be relevant for you anymore because the conversion the conversion rate changed. changed. Yeah. Yeah. So it could be that uh, you you pay Google per, uh, per click, for example, and yeah. uh, you're an experienced marketeer, or you have or you you work for a, for multiple clients, and so you have experience in okay for this kind of sector, for example, vertical or client, whatever. Uh, you know uh, this amount of traffic uh, equals to this amount of uh, budget, and exactly. it also uh, equals. Uh, a certain conversion rate, maybe depending on the seasonality and the time period and uh, of, of the year, but you can anticipate uh, on based on the history in your data. But that disappears all, all of a sudden because we're not in a standard uh, no. customer behavior environment anymore. It's not relevant anymore. And then you should, of course, assess and look for new ways to mm -hmm. um, to communicate, but also to um, to reduce the risk and to really work on a performance based uh, manner where you where you pay, for example, for the conversion that took place instead of just uh, a visitor on your website or a click somewhere. So I'm not sure 
with the audience if everybody knows what uh, performance based marketing is. Um, I will explain you today because I think it's good if we just show also with an example uh, what it is and uh, how, how it's uh, it looks like. So I will just put forward uh, first the, the theory and then uh, show you in practice. So basically affiliate marketing works on a performance based manner. We have, as Yuki said in the beginning, more than 15,000 uh, affiliates. So an affiliate is for us our network. They attract, a, of course, a specific target group and the advertiser that wants to be putting their ads on their website, we look for the same target audiences so we can reach, match. of course, yeah. with a good match. Based on products or service yeah. and also the target group they want to reach, of course, but also yeah. the KPIs. I mean, it, it all depends or it starts with your own strategy. If you're more, um, I don't know, end of the funnel oriented, then I exactly. guess we will um, yeah, advise you uh, different partners than if you're yeah. more uh, beginning of the funnel or, uh, or assisting uh, position. Yeah, depending on, of course, uh, that's why we always, uh, we, we cannot say, okay, you should start with affiliate marketing and we just uh, launch the program. No, it's always a conversation asking to the advertiser, what is the need at that moment? Mm -hmm. So basically, the affiliate who is a match will put the ad on their website. It cannot also be just a, a link, a text uh, in the content website. Um, so basically it's multiple ways. Then if I'm interested and I'm reading this blog and I'm interested in the article that they are talking about, I can click through and then I go to the advertiser's website. The conversions are tracked with our software. So basically if I buy on the advertiser's uh, website, then they will get um, a commission. So the affiliate that put the web, uh, the ad online will get the commission. To show you in real life, I uh, will take the example. I'm not sure if everybody here is familiar with uh, Trooper. For the people who know it, you can just put a yes or uh, in, in, this, in the chat. It's always nice to see yes no okay yes and no okay so basically i will just explain you very um <laughs> what a trooper is here you can see this is an initiative of kbc studio 100 and it's one of our we can say biggest uh, affiliates it's just the fastest growing uh, platform yes indeed we can say that today um, a lot of associates, a lot of um, associations, not associates, associations and uh, schools are present on this site. For example, um, my son's school is present on this site. And why should you as a school be on Trooper? Well, basically you ask the parents or um, the supporters of your uh, group to go to Trooper to buy something, to click here through uh, the web shop that uh, they want to buy something and the reduction that is given um, on the website will go to the school or the association that you are supporting. So for example, I will go to uh, my son's school and here you can see, okay, I want to support them. They are building new, um, new toilets, for example, and yeah, <laughs> it's a current case. So um, I will go, for example, to PharmaLine. Uh, because I see, okay, they will get 3% and uh, I need some vitamins. Um, now with the Corona crisis, I really want to uh, protect my health. So I will go Yuki, to... Yuki, 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 Yuki. Yes. Excuse me, excuse sorry, me sorry for... for uh, uh, but, but, but is... Um, is um, I can send you a uh, presentation. <laughs> and you cannot see my screen because... No, no, we can't see your presentation. Just sh share, the, share the screen. That's uh, very good that you told me because uh, I would just be uh, clicking and people would be like, huh? Okay. So okay, now we can see it. Okay. Okay. You can see that uh, we haven't done many <laughs> <laughs> live sessions. Um, okay. So here uh, we have Trooper, as you can all see. Uh, I just clicked on, um, I searched actually for my uh, son's school in Zoekje Vereniging. And then I'm here now at um, 
at their page, we can see that they have already collected uh, some money. And basically, they will say to the, all the parents, OK, go to go to Trooper because we are um, currently gathering some money to do some new projects. And I need, uh, as I told, uh, some vitamins uh, from Pharmaline. So I will go to um, Pharmaline via Trooper. And you can now see that it's being tracked by Trade Tracker. So this is um, the cookie that is dropped. So we are tracking this. And if I now purchase, um, for example, the vitamins or the product that I want, then the three percent will go to um, to our uh, to the school of of my son, so they can collect the money. But of course, uh, Trooper will also get some kind of commission depending on uh, what uh, affiliate it is, they will ask for different uh, commissions. Mm -hmm. So this is very short how it works. So there are, there are two things about that. Uh, the first thing is I, they also recruit a lot of um, yeah people or not recruit, but uh, I mean, as a school, sometimes it's difficult to find funding for uh, a certain project. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you read it, but on the on the page of the school of uh, Elisabetta's son, there's something like uh, we're um, we're funding a new um, how do you say it? Spielplatz, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, playground, playground, uh, and so please uh, help us with that. Um, and so, as a parent, you feel uh, some kind of responsibility. Mm -hmm. I think you want your yeah. kid to have a, a nice environment to to play. At, um, at school and so if you're uh, already um, buying stuff online and uh, you're already a bit familiar with the online shopping yeah. uh, you might as well do it via uh, Trooper and then there are two, two possibilities uh, they could already uh, know Pharmaline somehow, but there is also a great uh, possibility that they will only shop on the shops that are uh, on this platform because, in fact, uh, via these web shops they can support support the school of their uh, of their son. Yes. So what we saw in the in the in the data of this partner, for example, is that uh, our advertisers were able to reach uh, a whole new kind of of, of target group that they yes. didn't reach before. So they had a lot of new clients uh, because these parents were not uh, per se yeah um, intending on on searching for um, an online uh, pharmacy or uh, no. or they were not uh, maybe not thinking about uh, about uh, Landal they had another uh, another web shop in mind or another sh physical shop in mind to uh, to buy at yes yeah. and just because it's there you're more uh, engaged to shop via this yeah. this website because you know that you will support the good cause. Um, it's a good uh, yeah. Yes. Good to be associated with and uh, also I mean like here for example as well yeah you saw take uh, takeaway.com it may not be uh, your intention now to um, to order in mm -hmm. uh, but you also have the visibility of course of platforms with big volumes and this is a very specific example but you also have for example content websites um, that maybe uh, compare certain uh, services over uh, different uh, suppliers yes and then they're also uh, you're searching for a for certain product doesn't uh, um, doesn't matter where you where you buy it and you keep on scrolling on uh, some kind of uh, content website and then you get informed you get inspired and you go uh, you get redirected to the to yes the yes because it's more than just trooper of course it's um, it's much more than this but so it's not the visibility that you pay it's actually the the conversion it's only the conversion and that's what's uh, what's interesting I have. yeah it's, uh, it, do you see our presentation again I don't think so. Right. Yes, yes, we can. We yeah, you yeah. stop sharing. We see you again. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. okay, great. So, talking about the performance-based campaigns and and why in times of crisis uh, you should look at this possibility, it's because of course if you pay per click with the changing environment, as we said, um, it's a high-risk uh, investment because you don't know. Yeah, what what is the return on uh, on investment the there? Predictability is a bit yeah. gone. Uh, yeah, it's it's different because you don't you know historical data, and yeah. you don't have the data to to go back and look. Okay, you of course you know what it does in a normal uh, situation, but as times are changing and it's unpredictable, 
we have the no cure no trade policy with performance based marketing and that's why we really saw the change after everybody was in a panic and they said okay i will put it on mm. hold they quickly came back to us mm. and that's something that um we really saw the the change and okay the look the back perception. and mm -hmm. okay what can we do and basically they all said to us yeah we know we were very quickly to put it on hold but basically there is there is no risk for us because if we just continue we we won't pay anyway even if your um your logo on trooper is there for months and it doesn't do anything well you won't pay so there is no risk you will just pay after the sale is done and that's where um yeah we really want to tell you okay this is important to look at as a possibility in uh, in your strategy uh, apart from of course the the no risk um it's easy to set up you you saw how how it works i mean we have developed the software for it uh, it's also easy you can just apply and say okay i'm now in the network and you have the account manager who is uh, taking care of of the account and also sending out to all the affiliates uh, that are a match that okay here uh, is our new uh, advertiser let's uh, let's do something for them and of course you pay after the sale is done but this is important also to to say that if i purchase the vitamins and i am for some reason not happy with the product and i send it back then there will be no commission paid because I send it back and there's a time frame also to um, accept, accept yeah. yeah, and to accept the sales mm -hmm. because it's important to know, okay, were the shoes sent back or not? I mean, this is, this is vital. Um, yeah, the low risk involvement and the high return on investment as you don't uh, pay for it. Um, yeah, as, as you front. don't pay mm -hmm. upfront. And the market reach, it comes back to what I said that you will have the visibility if you're not uh, paying for it. This is, um, yeah, of course, very important, but how do we put this into practice? Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, Yuki will cover, mm -hmm. uh, the tips and the tricks with some uh, life examples. <laughs> So uh, it goes a bit broader than just the scope of um, of affiliate marketing, of course, because we, we put in our uh, title that yeah. it was performance based. So we wanted to also include other channels. Uh, I think, um, I, well, I hope this is this will be of a, of a, a bigger value. Um, so I think the main message, if it wasn't clear already, uh, is really to don't, to don't panic and stop all online campaigns just because it's an easy cost cut. And that's a very important one. It's not that I'm not saying that you can't cut budgets because uh, we already we also saw what it did to uh, business and and, and markets. Um, we also saw changing consumer behavior. So uh, the only thing I want to say with that is you can do it if it's a, a well argumented and based on facts uh, decision. If this after you dive in your data is the de decision you make, then of course make the cut, but don't do it out of uh, out of panic or because it's an easy an easy way to, uh, to cost uh, cut. A reason for that, why don't, don't do it out of panic, but do it with uh, some kind of reasoning. For example, uh, what if substitutes uh, are there and you aren't? Um, what we saw was in, in, in this uh, type of crisis that uh, by closing down physical stores, of course, um, certain, um, um, certain parties were obliged uh, to look into uh, more uh, online possibilities than they uh, they had before. Uh, and so this is, for example, an article uh, in the Twinkle magazine where uh, you read that uh, Leonie does start it at home delivery and I think also collect and go. Um, yeah, this means that this is um, for some um, for some suppliers, this is a new uh, type of uh, of, uh, yes. of um, competitor uh, that wasn't there before. So keep in mind that you may lose uh, existing customers if you would disappear, uh, disappear completely out of, uh, out of the picture. Then also uh, an important one is keep your customer warm. It's not because they're not converting right now that they won't in the, in the long on the longer term. Yes. Uh, and it's also it's always good to to uh, stay in uh, in contact with each other. 
so this is uh, an example that I will show uh, from Hotels.com, uh, which is actually uh, quite ir ironical as this is one of the verticals yes. that has been hit the most. So you would expect maybe from uh, travel parties that they would uh, completely um, yeah, uh, cancel everything. Yes. Uh, but in fact, it, this is what, uh, what uh, Hotels.com did. And I know uh, a lot of the advertisers don't have the the, the means or the budgets to uh, all of a sudden uh, create an entire uh, nice video yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I know this is an exceptional uh, example, but it's the it's the reasoning behind it that um, it's not because you're not selling right now. It doesn't mean you uh, you don't need to uh, stay in contact with the, with the customer. Then oh. Yeah, okay, so it also depends on the vertical you're in, for, uh, of course. Um, these are two examples. The one is um, the automotive industry and the other one is, uh, of course, the, the travel industry. Depends a bit on which vertical you're in that you will yeah. be uh, able to apply the, um, the tips and tricks that we're giving right now. Uh, but I think with a, a good um, yeah, reasoning behind it, you can uh, apply it to uh, to every vertical. So in general, I would advise uh, to make sure that you have a situation where you uh, can easily pivot. Uh, this is uh, really essential. Uh, you see it changing every every week. Um, so it's really important that actually in a standard or in a, in a normal situation, you already have uh, this kind of agility to be able to pivot based on uh, changing uh, customer um, behavior. Um, so I, what we saw with the, with the clients we work with, but also in general uh, in the media, um, is that a lot of um, companies um, actually experienced this kind of crisis and also a lot of um, digital marketeers experienced this kind of crisis for the very first time in their career or in their existence. Um, uh, apart for the 2008, but maybe a lot of them didn't, yes. yeah, weren't uh, already um, working back then. And so uh, this is really the chance uh, we, I think a lot of us expect uh, this type of crisis or it's a, a global one, but it can also be just for your industry or it could also be just for your company. Uh, uh, crisis management it, it exists, exactly. uh, an issue with your product or, uh, or service and it can happen so easily or a disruptive uh, competitor can be as well uh, that changes the whole the whole uh, game then it's it's just very important to look at uh, what we have what you have now is it something that is agile and does it um, enable us to change rapidly um, but on the other hand, also make sustainable choices because the choices that you make right now or the changes you make right now, um, be aware of it that it can be a permanent one, a one as well. I think a lot of the things that uh, we see as a change right now will be become a standard somehow because it also showed opportunities and it also showed uh, a lot of posi positive things maybe. Uh, so also make uh, sure that the choices you make are um, maybe uh, applicable for the longer term and don't make this the, these temporary um, bridges. Uh, and of course, your marketing department is not a decision island. Uh, and these types of situations, uh, these are often not things you can uh, decide on your own. Um, you have other uh, input of other departments are necessary to make uh, very good uh, decisions on it. So uh, keep that uh, keep that in mind for sure. So 
on a, on a, a data-driven uh, subject, make data-driven decisions. Dive into your data. Except um, in, in comparison to, for example, uh, be in a panic mode and cut everything, put everything uh, on, on stop. No, the, the first um, initiative should, should be dive into your data and, and performance-based channels are demand-driven and make demand-driven decisions. If you see, for example, that your customers um, are hitting uh, other time slots than they used to, yeah, you can uh, you can change that. Um, if you see that uh, they may be in another phase, uh, they're very explorative and they're not really converting, then yeah, of course you need to uh, change certain things uh, towards a more uh, initiating and assisting phase. And this also sometimes means you uh, you are going in uh, against your instincts. Uh, you have you have of course a gut feeling, uh, and it's always always good to listen to it. But please combine it with the data you see, because we saw a lot of decisions of ex or expectations. Yes. But actually, your consumers don't even know their sales. Uh, about them, how they are a different, uh, they are behaving differently. Mm -hmm. So how are you uh, going to predict that? It's impossible. The only thing you can do is look at the facts, look at what's happening, um, and combine that. This, of course, with a with a good um, with a good understanding and a good um, gut feeling. Then, yeah, like I already said, changing customer behavior. What does this mean for your approach? Um, and also keep in mind that there could be other bottlenecks than just the sales numbers. Uh, you could uh, take a look at your uh, data and say, hey, but we're doing really great. And in fact, more people are buying online and now we're, uh, the, our, our numbers, our sales numbers are skyrocketing. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do, um, I don't know, uh, an, uh, an offer uh, free delivery, uh, and we're going to boost some more. Yeah, what we saw, for example, with the client Pharma line is that uh, they had this kind a type of situation. Actually, uh, how cruel it is to say this was a positive situation for them. A lot of people were forced to buy uh, online, mm -hmm. and they were looking into uh, all sorts of. Uh, I, I can uh, remember uh, all the ibuprofen were uh, were sold out because people thought uh, that would be uh, some kind of resistance uh, builder. Um, and so, what the problem they had were not their sales, but it was actually the the fact that they couldn't deliver on time. It sometimes took two weeks to deliver a certain product, which is also very bad for your customer experience. So yeah, you could say, oh, my sales are doing uh, terrifically and uh, I will put in an offer with, uh, with free delivery and I will go full Monty. Uh, but you will have other problems afterwards um, that could, um, on the longer term, for your customer experience, be a, a bad idea. And so they pivoted. Uh, they um, they hired a hundred uh, somewhat uh, extra people, and they uh, first. Uh, they um, came with a solution for the bottleneck of uh, the logistics and the delivery. And then they uh, did together with us uh, a campaign to, um, to boost even more uh, the sales. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a, an important one uh, to keep in mind. And it also reflects on you're not a decision, uh, decision island. Then, of course, if you dive into your data, it's also uh, key that you report on it. And there I would advise to follow up very closely. Um, I saw some clients changing from a weekly or even monthly report to a daily reporting. And actually, we saw a lot of um, yeah things that we noticed on, a, on, on almost on a, a daily uh, basis that changed uh, certain strategies. You also uh, need to take into account that there are a lot of external influences that you don't have control of. Exactly. I think in this crisis, one of them was the government deciding on certain uh, things. Um, even now with the, with the travel sector, how bad it is, it even get, it gets better when uh, a region that is popular in Belgium gets uh, orange or red or whatever. Uh, you really see um, the influences of um, external factors that you can't control. So it's very important that you follow up uh, on a daily basis. And here, I, I, I know I talked a lot of, uh, about uh, making long-term decisions, sustainable choices, etc. But regarding planning, I would keep it on the short term. Because um, actually, you 
won't be able to predict what is happening no. within two weeks. And that's exactly. even that's already very difficult. Yeah. Uh, when I talk to, uh, for example, a TUI, they really say, yeah, a last minute decision is what what is happening right now uh, at the consumer side. It's a last decision, uh, last minute decision making. Um, it, it changes a lot and we can see until, for example, uh, the end uh, of October um, bookings coming in. But after that, it's a very, uh, very uh, poor. And so, yeah, reports on it, uh, that's uh, that's very important. Then also look at what is what is my message? Uh, is the message that I'm communicating right now appropriate? Um, I think this may seem, uh, seem logic because, uh, yeah, it's difficult times. Everyone is is um, is aware of the of the sensitivity of the subject. And uh, yeah, at this moment, I think there was a case with uh, Corona Direct, for example. Um, they were shown via, I think it was uh, Google Display, if I'm not mistaken, and they were shown on uh, articles on uh, yeah media platforms that talked about the coronavirus, and they were associated with it, uh, with it. So because of the name, of course, and so they were shown um, with the banner or whatever uh, via yeah via a bidding uh, system uh, where they were shown. Um, so please get a hold of uh, what is my message and, and how can uh, the, the, the communication that is going on right now maybe uh, have an effect on that. Um, and so what may say, seem appropriate uh, before it hit us um, and, and also seem a bit standard, yeah, we're not saying anything special, it still can be, perci uh, be uh, perceived as something else by, uh, by the people experiencing this, uh, this kind of uh, crisis uh, situation. So yes. I would advise a, a kind of always on layer that you're, ever, that you're present, uh, but um, uh, simultaneously also adjust your message um, towards the, the specific um, yeah, period that is going on at that time. I again the um, uh, example of the crisis right now, but the the moment that um, it has hit us uh, very hard. I think everyone was com communicating more in a kind of we're in this together. Mm -hmm. We gotta stay together. Uh, at home is where we um, also um, protect each other. And if you love someone, you stay home and you don't see them yes. for a while. That was the general. Was but the it also changed. So it's not the same message anymore and that's what I mean with an always on layer and an adjusted me message depending on what is happening uh, at the moment but there and also therefore you need to be very agile and and, and on a very uh, short uh, short period transparent communication is also very important at that, uh, at that time um, for example, if in the case uh, of Fermaline, if you have very um, long delivery periods, please communicate about it. And there are all and there are already so much uh, uncertainty, so many uncertainties in our lives. Please don't um, make me doubt about your brand or your um, or, or your company and what you are going to or promising to deliver. So transparency, even if it's not uh, the most positive and uh, great. Uh, message still communicate because it's better than suppress and uh, people finding it out uh, for the uh, for themselves and as uh, Elisabetta already told yeah you have um, a lot of people working from home or not working or maybe part uh, part time yeah. uh, whatever uh, the situation uh, what we saw of course this is a very evident one is that people uh, uh, full force online, very uh, much present, uh, yes. more reading, more browsing. There was also a period where people were fed up with all the information and didn't want to read anything about Corona, but other content that maybe um, were completely off topic, but were uh, light and breezy to read something positive, to put you yeah. in a good mood. Uh, another, another message. So. Uh, creating more content if you would um, you would be able to do that this was uh, for sure or this is for sure uh, still the the time to to do it then uh, this was uh, an example uh, f uh, about um, changing uh, changing your message or adjusting your message um, so Dela uh, what they saw was okay this is of course, this is already a, a sensitive uh, subject. 
um, you don't, uh, well, I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't like to uh, think of, about uh, my death or how I'm going no. to die or, <laughs> or whatever. Um, so it's a, it's a very sensitive uh, subject. So they are already very uh, busy with how are, are we perceived, what are yeah. what is the language we choose, uh, what are the words we choose to um, to use, etc. Uh, and what they saw was they got a lot of. Um, yeah, or more than usual negative reactions on uh, their posts. So, for example, here uh, here you see a sponsored post. Th this was not the post that got uh, negative um, ne negative feedback. But so people found it a bit uh, annoying, or or they perceived it as you're selling something that, of course, nowadays may be more uh, relevant. Okay. Um, but yeah, we don't like it. We don't like to be uh, confronted with that, and we, I, uh, we don't like your like your message. And they completely switched to what you see here uh, on the slides. So um, they 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 adjusted the message. Uh, they um, really uh, supported also, and uh, maybe the questions you have related to um, yeah, saying goodbye to someone in these times. How does it uh, how does it work? Yes. Um, and so they actually almost created an extra service um, related to their product or service. Yes. They, uh, and that's very, they that's very beautiful in, in that time because, I mean, people were, the fact was that people were losing uh, some friends or family at that time. And it was very hard to be confronted with, uh, with such, such yeah. a message. Mm -hmm. I think it's also great that Dela could talk to Trade Tracker about that mm. and that we could assess together, okay, what can the message be? And we need to adjust uh, almost almost weekly, but for some uh, sectors daily even, mm -hmm. because with what's coming Friday, mm -hmm. we don't know either what will the new changes be. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, I think that they really did a, a good job yeah. there. So another thing you can uh, ask some questions about is, OK, which channels uh, will we use? So as um, Elisabetta already told uh, you, CPA is, means uh, low risk. If you um, pay for the conversion, so uh, if it's a lead, if it's a form that they fill yes. in, or is it a, um, is it a really a hard sale? Um, you, oh, yeah, it, it, it's a, a low risk because, you know, you have a, a customer or potential uh, customers. But on the other hand, what we also saw was that the cost per click um, decreased with 40%. So on the other hand, it may also be interesting, but this all depends on all the analysis you did uh, before yeah, and yeah. what we talked about on the other slides. It may be interesting to still do a, a Google AdWords campaign, of course, because people are browsing a lot. Uh, they may come in, uh, in contact with your uh, with your brand, but maybe you have to look at other keywords that were not yeah. so interesting uh, before because the, pri the price of a, of a, of a click um, decreased. Um, if you work on automatical um, optimization, I would say change to manual, uh, and this is all related to being uh, this agile, to dive in, uh, yourself into the data, to change uh, often. Think a bit the A-B testing, what works, what works n n best. You, yes. you got to find uh, maybe your new rhythm or uh, you need to test uh, some things uh, out. And then also differ, uh, differentiate. I think actually this this would be an advice that we will would also always give. If you're very depending on one or two channels that uh, generate the most revenue, yeah. If this is a channel at uh, that in a time of um, in a special uh, a special period uh, is not used by the consumer or uh, yeah uh, gives you a different conversion uh, conversion rate. Yeah, uh, it's it's. It's shit <laughs> because yeah you're very depending on it so if yes. you differentiate you you have within your pivot already um, more of a of a, an orientation and you can also um a bit um, compare the, the different, the channels, different to channels to each other how is it working and maybe um yeah put some change some budgets from uh, from one channel to another um and also, yeah, uh, from your data, it may uh, may seem that it's better to to change uh, to focus on a on a different journey uh, phase. Uh, if the conversion is low, for example, it could be that uh, you should focus on uh, on an inspiration phase. And we have another example for that. Um, 
I hope this works. Do you still see our screen? Is it a video or not? Okay, come on. Another video? Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah they see the video. Maybe. Yes, now we see. Oh, yeah, I know that video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this was again. I, I think there were. Um, there were a lot of elements um, in this. Uh, oh, what the crap! Just wait. Yeah. You. Um there were a lot of uh, elements um, that uh, that I just discussed in this video. And uh, the first of one uh, of all is maybe that this is uh, completely against your uh, your um, how do you say it? Your instincts, because yeah, actually they want to sell. Uh, they want to attract tourists to come to Portugal. Uh, they really want you uh, to yeah, because they will have lesser income uh, of tur uh, tourism. Tourists, you would yeah. want to uh, push, 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 come to us. Uh, but also um, yeah, I don't know. Communicate a bit more about all the all the different activities and all the uh, the different uh, yes, of course, the, the different things that they have going on. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah at, exactly. at that moment. So you would say maybe that was the the uh, the initial reaction, but again they changed to uh, no please stay at home and this is really the inspiration phase that we will show you really nice visuals about our country about our cities and all the the possibilities if you come to us but for now please stay home you need to stop with uh, what you were doing um and uh, we are uh, inspiring, inspiring at already. this moment to uh, in a later stage maybe uh, come to uh, portugal when it's uh, when it's uh, normal again. So just to sum up, I think um, the key element here is in the tips and tricks is uh, for sure optimization, optimization, optimization continuously uh, and that doing that on based on, on the data you see because it's uh, as I started telling you, uh, it depends very much on uh, which vertical you're in and which uh, type of uh, product or service you're delivering. Uh, Please look at what is your uh, maximum cost per order that you can give uh, on a commission based uh, model. It doesn't matter if it's CPC, CPM, CPA. Um, you look at, OK, what are we selling? What is our margin and which part of that can we give to uh, online marketing to have extra extra sales 
and uh, which channels for that uh, are optimizing that uh, CPO. And of course, you can also cap, uh, cap your spend. I think this is very obvious. I already talked about the A-B testing. Uh, I think you need to uh, see it as uh, a new, uh, as if you uh, begin from from zero, and you need to find out, okay, what is working, what is not, um, and you can also limit the number of partners if you th if you, if the control if you're missing the control and you don't, and that's the the thing that makes you a bit. Uh, scared or makes you panic to stop everything yeah just limit the number of channels or partners in our uh, in our case and just work with i don't know your your three top partners, top partners yes. um and intensify uh, that uh, relationship and i think that's uh, that was it so i also see we're uh, exactly the one hour <laughs> so i don't know if there's a lot of time to have a q and a uh, but we also included our um, contact details so feel free to uh, send us a message on LinkedIn or via email or uh, whatever okay thank you very much uh, yes this is going yes you hear it yeah thank you all very much it was super interesting we have been recording the the webinar and it will be uh, put available just have to check out when and how uh, either on our YouTube or on um, Anyway, to the account of to the BeCommerce account uh, that our uh, members um, have access to. But it was uh, definitely interesting. And, and indeed, we are running out of time. We have four more minutes left. If uh, any one of you has a question, please feel free to um, throw it in the group. And um, maybe we can all learn from each other by sharing the questions. If, uh, if it's not coming up right now, uh, we can, uh, anyway, you will have, uh, again, as I explained, the chance to, to watch it again. But uh, the ladies will, of course, also be uh, available to be contacted, I assume, through email. You so, can always uh, contact us uh, yeah. questions. Or you just want to chat a bit further about? Uh, we're also a big fan of uh, coffee, so uh, <laughs> we're also very willing to uh, to drink some coffee sometime. Okay, great. Um, we uh, we are gonna close down. If there are no questions, uh, I open I the chat. I see somebody sure. typing, so we will maybe just wait. Yeah. Oh, it was thanks okay. for the webinar. <laughs> okay. I thought okay. maybe question is popping Super. up. Okay, super. Okay, thank you, everybody. Yes, thank you. Great Bye. having you today. Yeah, the same. So uh, we will follow up, okay? All Thanks right. all. Thank all you. right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.